Well, good afternoon. I'm, uh, I'm thrilled, to, thrilled, absolutely thrilled to be here. Um, we'll see if you still are after my 45 minutes. <laughs> I am a professor. Never give a professor a microphone, right? Yeah, yeah. This afternoon, I would like to start with some notes of appreciation. In the audience, there are former presidents and first ladies. Barbara Mansky, Jack and Sherry Preuss, Kurt and Val Krieger. Kim and I are honored and very humbled to follow in your stead. I also want to acknowledge and thank the presidents and dignitaries from the other seven Concordias who are in attendance. Reverend Dr. Pat Ferry, President of Concordia University, Wisconsin and Concordia University, Ann Arbor. Dr. Russell Don, many of you know Dr. Russell. <laughs> Dr. Russell Don, President of Concordia University, Chicago. Reverend Russell Sommerfeld, Interim President, Concordia University, Nebraska. Dr. Eric Lamott, Provost, Chief Operating Officer, Concordia University, St. Paul. Mr. Daniel Gregory, Vice President of Administration, Concordia University, Texas. And Reverend Dr. Philip Brandt, Professor of Theology, Concordia University, Portland, and one of my very dearest friends. For the trust, thank you, thank you. For the trust they have placed in me, I want to thank two synodical representatives, Reverend Dr. Dean Winthy and Reverend Dr. Scott Murray, and also Reverend Dr. Mike Gibson, President of the Pacific Southwest District. Thank you. I am honored that there are presidents, uh, board members, delegates from many other universities, as well as from the NCAA in attendance. Thank you for attending. Present are some very special friends of Concordia University, Irvine, the mayor of Irvine, Christina Shea, and State Senator John Morlock. Thank you. Thank you to all of the faculty, staff, and students um, who are in attendance today. It means a great deal to me that you would take the time, of course, canceling classes and setting this at 2 p.m. in the afternoon helps the students get here. So thank you for, thank you for being here, students. Thank you. Thank you to the Board of Regents and the Board of Trustees who have placed this trust in me. I am delighted to serve with you in guiding Concordia University Irvine into the future boldly. Thank you to the Concordia Music Ensembles, the local Lutheran High School choirs, I thank God for all your amazing gifts, and we have seen those definitely on display today. So thank you so much. <laughs> Deep appreciation goes to the inaugural committee for their tireless efforts in pulling off this event. And I, do, I owe a deep gratitude, sorry, a great debt of gratitude, sorry about that, to Dr. Jack Schultz, for the heart, care, and the thoughtfulness that he has wrought with his hands in crafting this pre presidential medallion. To Reverend Dr. Thank you. Thank you. To Reverend Dr. Chad LaKeys, you are one of my closest friends. I am honored that you would accept the invitation to serve as the inaugural speaker. Thank you. Deep appreciation, of course, um, and love go to my family who are in the front row, my parents, Don and Jan, Aunt Diane Anderson, uh, my brother-in-law, Todd Boyce, and his lovely wife, Stephanie, my children, Darian and Delaney, and of course, my deepest appreciation and heartfelt love goes to my delightful and very patient wife, Kim. And as Phil and Chad will attest, Kim is very patient. So we served together at Portland for many years. OK, thank you. And that's the end of the thank yous. Now we're at the speech, OK? okay. Give me just a moment.
because I'm going to quote Latin here in a minute, and I need a drink. So. <laughs> okay. The word inauguration. The word inauguration connotes a new beginning, especially the beginning of a new public office. The word in English is nearly always connected to a presidency. The inauguration of a president is usually a grand affair. Well, I'd say, look around. It's a pretty grand affair today. A lot of people have dedicated an enormous amount of time and energy to create this communal celebration. And for that, I am extremely thankful. The word inauguration, however, is very odd. Inauguration is derived etymologically, yes, Darian, I just said etymologically, from the Latin word augur. And augur was a Roman priest who sought to discern the will of the gods by observing the flight patterns and behaviors of birds. This practice seemingly is connected to the founding of Rome. Romulus and Remus, the twin sons of Mars, they disagreed over which of the seven hills of Rome should have preeminence. When they could not resolve this, this dispute, they agreed to let the gods decide through a contest of augury. Remus saw six auspicious birds. Romulus then saw 12. Thus, Rome was founded on the Palatine Hill. But how is this bizarre pagan practice connected to a presidential inauguration? Well, in Republican Rome, augurs were called upon to take the auspices before an official was allowed to take up the mantle of leadership to serve the Republic. We do not, as far as I know, have an assigned augur here this afternoon, <laughs> although I know there are a few Roman historians in the audience. Yet, if there were a designated augur in the audience today, we can all agree that it would have to be C.J. Armstrong. <laughs> and as an aside, I'm sure some of the faculty are breathing a sigh of relief. Wow, our new president really is an academic. He definitely is one of us. When he gets the podium, he begins sharing a lot of arcane knowledge and useless facts. Right? <laughs> Indeed, I am a professor. Right? While we have no auger in the room today and no birds to speak of, I find it fight quite comfortable that the Concordia University mascot is an eagle. Coincidence? Eh, I'm not so sure. Right. An inauguration is a daunting idea. A new start, a new beginning, a new transformation. And the college years are transformative. For students, especially undergraduate, residential students, these years are transformative because they are filled with choices. What courses should I take? Which people should I befriend? What activities should I join in? How will I manage all this freedom? And of course, my questions to them are, what are you choosing to do with this time? What will your college experience be? For graduate students, the choices are also myriad. What degree will help my career? How can I possibly balance academics with raising a family? Is it worth the investment of time, of treasure? Am I too old to do this college thing? And will my friends and family accept me after I have had this transformative experience? So there are many questions that are asked by our students. Some are practical, some are philosophical, and yes, some are religious and spiritual. At Concordia University, Irvine, all students, undergraduate and graduate, on ground and online, experience a robust Lutheran liberal arts curriculum that forms the foundation of the professional programs that are offered here. But we do more than prepare students for degrees. We prepare them for lifelong learning, service to others, and ethical leadership in every one of their vocations. It's right there in our mission statement, Concordia University, Irvine, guided by the Great Commission of Christ Jesus and the Lutheran Confessions, empowers students through the liberal arts and professional studies for lives of learning, service, and leadership. But how is this mission statement played out day to day? 
Well, at Concordia, we focus on the holistic integration of all ways of knowing, all ways of being, academic, spiritual, social, and communal. This is carried out in a thousand different ways, in the classrooms, in the residence halls, on the athletic fields, in the Grimm Student Union, in the Borland Mansky Center, churches, neighborhoods of Orange County, and beyond. At Concordia, we do not tell students what to believe or how to believe, what to study or what career to pursue. But we do help students individually to discern their own paths on this journey of discovery. And we help them. We help them discover the intersections between their beliefs, their passions, their talents, and their career options. At Concordia, we develop students who, at their very core, are critical questioners. We want every student to ask deep and thoughtful questions. We give them the toolbox of the reporter. Who, what, where, when, how, and why. And we also help them ask deeper, more profound questions. What do you want to be? Who do you want to be? And at Concordia, we ask them to wrestle with the spiritual question, whose do you want to be? This is a process of self-discovery and transformation. But ultimately, we help the students see that this is not just about them. For a truly enriched life is live for God and live for others. This leads to a different set of questions. How are you using your gifts to serve others? How are you alleviating the suffering in this world? How are you combating ignorance and bigotry? And how are you promulgating civility in a broken world? Ultimately, this process helps students, all students at Concordia, to discover their own vocations, their own divine callings. How many alumni are in the room? Could I see a show of hands? That's spectacular. Right. Well, I hope and pray the educational philosophy that I've just described rings true. I know it certainly does for me. While I am not an alumnus of Concordia University, Irvine, I call that Concordia to the north my alma mater. Yeah. I was shaped there and formed there in just these ways. The faculty and staff at Concordia were fully dedicated to the holistic transformation of a kid from a small logging town in northwest Montana. Certainly many of you know that I'm the first in my family to go to college. Uh, little did I know, and I'm sure it's still a surprise to my family in the front row, <laughs> how God would direct my life in so many unexpected ways. I thought at first I was being called into the pastoral ministry. Many in this room who have just started to get to know me are very aware that such a path would have been likely disastrous. <laughs> yes, President Gibson, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm much safer here. Yeah. Later, I served the church overseas in Panama and then also in Japan. I thought perhaps God was calling me into the mission field. Yet those doors closed too. But it was obvious to others, not always to me, that God was calling me into the teaching ministry. And I still am in the teaching ministry, even with this new call. I told the Faculty of Arts and Sciences a few weeks ago that I consider myself a faculty member on loan to the administration. Many of you, especially the students, know that I introduced myself as Dr. Thomas, not President Thomas. I still am a teacher. I still am a professor. But now I'm called to teach a very different subject. No more Latin and Greek, unless they call me in to pitch in you know, at some point. But no more long lectures on the Gospel of John. No more long lectures on ancient Roman history. Okay, periodically I will pontificate from the podium some arcane knowledge and useless facts. But now I have a different subject and a different audience. 
I am now teaching prospective students and their families, current faculty and staff, board of regents and trustees, congregations and pastors, and donors and friends of the university. And my new subject, Concordia University, Irvine, and all it has to offer to a world in desperate need of hope. For those of you who are still awake <laughs> and keeping track, I'm on page 10, by the way. Yeah. You might have noticed that I have not yet mentioned the inaugural theme. That should be a clue. I'm going on a while. No, not much longer. The inaugural theme, it's noted in your program, the inaugural theme is faithfully curious. Some of you th are thinking, geez, how much longer is this inauguration, this so-called beginning, going to go on? But faithfully curious. Why did I pick this inaugural theme? Well, first, curious is a verb. It's an action. It's what we're all about at a Lutheran liberal arts university. Generating and cultivating curiosity in our students, undergraduates and graduates alike. Getting them to ask deep questions that start with the questions, who, what, where, when, how, and why. We want to cultivate curiosity but we are, we are also a Lutheran liberal arts university. And that adjective, Lutheran, matters. We want students to be curious, but we want to help them become faithfully curious. We do not mean that some questions are off limits, as if curiosity must be constrained. There are no questions that are off limits. We were created by God as rational creatures in his image with a human brain. And humans innately are born to ask questions. Do you want proof of this? Consult a toddler. Right? What's their favorite question? Why? Okay. Faithfully curious. We want to help students ask religious questions as well. What are my vocations? What is my purpose on this earth? How will God use me as his hands and feet to alleviate the suffering of others? How can I learn to truly, sacrificially love my neighbor as myself? Can I say with all my heart, mind, soul, and body that I love God and love my neighbor before myself? Okay, I think I've driven home the fact that Concordia University Irvine is a place where students become faithfully curious. But what about others who are connected to this university, this community? What about the faculty, the staff, the administrators, the Board of Regents, the trustees of Concordia? Have we embraced this spirit? Of course, some. Probably many have. Right? But as a community, are we, as a community, curious? What program should we offer in the 21st century to meet the demands of students and their families? How can we better serve them? Are we welcoming the first-generation students? What about students from underserved communities? How do the residence halls prepare students to live in balance with one another? Do athletics model a healthy balance for the student athlete? Do music, theater, and arts cultivate creativity that makes the human spirit soar? Do our graduate programs create ethical servant leaders? And the list goes on. I do not raise these questions as a critique or as a draft of a 25-point strategic plan, that will come, no, I'm not, 20 point only. Um, I raise these as a challenge to the Concordia community. We cultivate students to be faithfully curious. Are we? It starts with us, each of us. How can we lean into serving our students and the Concordia community more faithfully? And it can get very personal. How am I? serving and loving others? Why has God called me to serve here at Concordia? Faithfully curious. We are heirs to a rich, deep, 500-year history of people who asked how and why. From Luther in 16th century Wittenberg to Mansky, Moon, Hartman, Schramm, and Holtz on a barren hilltop in 1976, to the many faithful gifted leaders throughout the faculty and staff who have brought us to this moment in 2020. Curiosity flows from our Lutheran Christian faith. 
new ideas, trying new things, stepping out boldly. This is the innate creative spirit of Christianity. Each day we start anew, forgiven, restored, able to lean into a newness of life. So I challenge all of us in this room to be bold, to be faithfully curious, to be daring, to try new things. The faculty and staff at Concordia are exceptionally talented, very gifted, and wickedly smart. There are many terrific ideas that are locked away. Let's unleash those. Let's step out boldly and hopefully. And when we fail, and if we are being bold and creative, we will sometimes fail. Then we need to forgive and move on. We are children of grace. And as a community, we need to extend forgiveness freely and widely. And we need to remain faithfully curious as we wrestle boldly with how to serve our Concordia students, their families, each other, and this community. As a very new member of this community, I bring one distinct advantage. Not many more than that, just the one, right? I see Concordia with new eyes. I can tell you without a doubt that the love and care you have for your students and for one another is palpable. Certainly there are challenges and obstacles, but this community knows collectively that we provide an exceptional holistic education for all students. They are transformed intellectually, physically, morally, and spiritually as they meet Jesus Christ in each of us. For we are his hands and feet in this world. For this opportunity, we should continually praise God. I am not certain if this inauguration is auspicious. There has been no ancient practice of augury. Marty the Eagle didn't even make an appearance. And I'm very, very, very dis disturbed by that. I'll, I'll be talking to athletics soon. But one thing I know with certainty, it is extremely humbling and a sacred honor to serve alongside all of you as the fifth president of Concordia University, Irvine. Thank you and may God continue to bless our collective mission and this university which is dedicated to living out the great commission of Christ Jesus. Thank you.